In this video, we're going to pre-process a set of almost 2,000 images captured with the Seastar S250's two filters, the light pollution filter and the infrared cut filter. These images were captured over the course of several nights, as you can see from the file names. Each night, the Seastar produces a single master image. What we're going to do is combine all the subframes in a single master using FBPP. When working with datasets as large as this, there are various ways we can adjust our settings to optimize the computer's resources. We're going to start with the simplest approach, which is to add all the frames and simply pre-process them with fast integration. This dataset includes four 30-second frames with a light pollution filter and four 10-second frames. We're going to remove these because they're either too short or too long. To do this, we go to the Lights tab, select the frames, and click on the Remove Selected button. Now, in the Calibration tab, we have two sets of frames, one for each filter. FBPP will process each set separately and generate two different masters, one with an integration time of five and a half hours, and another with an integration time of two and a half hours. Now we simply select the output directory. In the directory containing the frames, we're going to create a subdirectory called FBPP. Finally, we check the diagnostic messages and they tell us that no calibration frames have been provided. That's normal because the CSTAR doesn't allow users to calibrate frames themselves. The frames it provides are already pre-calibrated. The image headers are correct so we can calculate the astrometric solution automatically. This means we'll have two masters with a pre-computed astrometric solution. This will make it easier later when we come to do the flux calibration, gradient correction, and then the color calibration. And now we click Run. Here's the execution monitor, which tells us that the first step in the pipeline is the debiring. And now, the fast integration process has started. To optimize the computer's resources, fast integration divides the subframes into batches of 100. We can see here that the registration of some images has failed. This is completely normal because the C-Star may have tracking issues in some frames and in others there are clouds which makes the signal very weak. Although the C-Star has already rejected some frames, fast integration performs a second quality control check. It's better to exclude these frames from the master light integration. Now we're integrating the second batch of data with the infrared cut filter. Here, fast integration reports that registration of 65 frames has failed. Some frames have failed in the second batch too. But by excluding these frames, we'll actually be improving the quality of the master light. Now it's cropping the two master lights. And finally, it's calculating the astrometric solution. For this final step, the FITS headers must contain the correct data. With this type of telescope, this is not something that users can control. The manufacturer is responsible for this information. Once the pre-processing is finished, we can close FBPP and open the two masters, which will be in the FBPP directory in the master subfolder. Here we have four images, two for each filter. Each filter has the result of the fast integration process and the autocrop. We're going to open the two autocrop images. We can close the two crop masks, leaving just the two masters. Now, if we press Control-A, we can see the linear images. Remember, 
As we haven't done the color calibration yet, it's best to unlink the RGB channels and reapply the auto stretch. As you can see, the light pollution filter enhances the nebulas and weakens the stars. However, it also affects the color representation as the stars have turned reddish or turquoise with nothing in between. By contrast, with the other filter, we have stars that are blue, orange, yellowish, or almost white. We always recommend enabling drizzle configuration when generating masters in PixInsight. We can enable this option in the Post Calibration tab. Drizzle can partially recover resolution in undersampled images because we can increase the scale. However, in the case of the C star, where the image is already sufficiently sampled, we're going to generate masters without increasing the image resolution. Although we're not increasing the resolution, Drizzle configuration will help avoid any artifacts produced by the interpolation algorithms when we align the images. This step requires more calculation time, but it will always provide the best possible result. Let's create the output directory. We'll call it fbpp-drizzle. Now we select the diagnostic messages, and finally we click Run. Now, in the execution monitor, we can see that after the fast integration step, we're going to generate additional masters with Drizzle. Now, Drizzle integration is running. As you can see in the console, Drizzle integration loads the images one at a time instead of in batches like fast integration. Once it's generated the masters with Drizzle, it crops all the masters and calculates the astrometric solutions. Now that the process has finished, we can see that enabling Drizzle configuration added six minutes to the calculation time. Now we can close the script, And in the output directory, we find the fast integration masters for the two filters, the masters with drizzle for the two filters, and the masters with autocrop. The ones we're going to use are the masters with drizzle and with autocrop.